Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another gun store vlog where today we will be talking about the new ATF Form 4473 background check that will be coming out early next year. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. All right, for those of you new to the channel, we have been in business as an FFL holder for the better part of 10 years. When we get new news that sort of changes how operations are handled inside of gun stores, we like to bring that information to you. Remember that I am not an attorney. Nothing in this video should be considered as legal advice. And if you have any questions about the information in this video, please direct those to your attorney. Now, jumping into this, I did just receive a memo from the ATF in regards to a new Form 4473 that is going to be uh, required for dealers to start using as early as April of next year. The hard copy will be available to dealers in February, and the ATF actually encourages dealers to go ahead and start using the form now, so you may start seeing this form when you go into your local gun store to purchase a firearm. Now, the changes are in response to the NICS Denial Notification Act and the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which just passed this year. I've done videos on those, and you can refer back to those through our video uh, library if you want to know more specific information about those, but we'll gloss over some of the information about those acts in this video as well as it pertains to the new 4473. In the memo, it does state, due to new statutory requirements set forth in both the NICS Denial Notification Act and the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, and reflect the implementation of the ATF Final Rule uh, 2021R-05F, ATF Form 4473 has been revised. Because the new statutory requirements are designed to enhance public safety and to ensure compliance with the provisions in the final rule, the Office of Management and Budget has provided emergency, emergency authorization to ATF to immediately use the revised 4473. ATF will be publishing the revised form uh, from, I'm sorry, the revised form for notice and comment review in the coming months. ATF encourages all federal firearms licensees to begin using the revised form immediately. The revised form is available on ATF's website, and I'm going to leave these linked below for you guys, and can be downloaded and printed for immediate use. Please note that the entire form, including instructions, must be printed and stored together. Hard copies of the revised form will be available through the ATF Distribution Center beginning February 1st. That's when the actual printed forms that are, you know, perforated and, you know, like the forms, the paper forms you guys are used to seeing now, those will be available February 1st. So you guys will probably start seeing this 4473 pretty often after February of 2023. The ATF e Form 4473 application is also being revised and notification will be sent when it is ready for use. That is the digital uh, online form submission process that a lot of dealers use. Significant changes in the revised forms are as follows. So these are the specific changes you guys will notice on the form. Any firearm received by an FFL that was privately made, not manufactured by another licensee, must now be recorded on the ATF Form 4473 as Privately Made Firearm, or PMF. This has been added to Item 1, Section A, and now reads, Manufacture and Importer, if any, or Privately Made Firearm, PMF, if the manufacturer and imported are different. So when we list the, the information about the firearm on the top of the Form 4, 4473, which we currently do now, we have to now specify if it's a privately made firearm. I believe that this is in regards to uh, 3D printed firearms or firearms that are manufactured completely at home by non-licensees, which you can do. However, you cannot manufacture them for the purpose of resale, but I believe, and again, consult your attorney, if you manufacture a firearm for your own personal use and later on down the road decide you don't want it anymore, you can sell it. Now, as dealers, we have to identify those firearms on the Form 4473. Now, I know the obvious question is going to be, what about at-home built AR-15s or AKs? I do not believe that this, this would fall into this provision, but I'm going to double check on that and maybe give you guys an update soon. Uh, because the receiver is considered the firearm and the receiver, if it's manufactured by Palmetto or Aero Precision, uh, those are licensees, those are 07 manufacturers, that would not fall into this requirement, again, as those are not completely made uh, at home. Now, an 80% lower, that is finished by a private person. Yes, that would be a privately manufactured firearm, and we would have to note that on the Form 4473. Next, question 10 is revised. The transferee buyer is now asked to answer whether they reside in city limits. 
Regarding their resident, residential address, for example, if a transferee lists their residence, city, and state as Phoenix, Arizona, but they actually reside outside of the city, they are now required to answer no on that question. So reverting to the form 4473, typically you're going to see in question 10 your address information that you need to put. That's your number and street address, the city and state you reside in, zip code and county. Now included in that, and you guys will see up here on the screen, they're going to ask if you reside in city limits. The reason for that is because of the NICS Denial Notification Act. If you are de uh, delayed or denied, we already do have to supply that information, your address, to the NICS Operations Center because now it is required that they send that information to the F or to I'm sorry, local law enforcement within a 24-hour period upon a denied status on a background check, so that local police can go pay that person a visit. Remember on the top of the form 4473, it states if you lie on the form, you can be in prison for up to 10 years and you can pay up to a $250,000 fine. Historically, very few people have been charged with this, but now with the Nix Denial Notification Act and I believe also the, uh, the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2022, they're going to enforce this more strictly and because of that, they are requiring that information be sent from Nix to local law enforcement. Having to uh, to state whether you live in or outside of city limits would basically dictate the jurisdiction you live in so they would know which police department would be appropriate to contact upon a denial status. So that has now been implemented in the new form and you guys will see that question. Now there is a response of unknown. So if you are, are unsure, you can mark unknown. I don't know what implications that will have through the process of actually processing your background check that will delay you or if we are not allowed to proceed with that until you do get a, a definitive response of whether you do live in or outside of city limits. Uh, that is yet to be determined. And again, these are follow-up questions that I will be asking my attorney as well as my ATF uh, local field agent. So um, I will come back again with an update in a few weeks when I have more clear information. Again, remember, this is just a preliminary uh, update on this information. I just received this information yesterday. Next is going to be, so in the questions uh, 21A through, I don't remember, A through I or whatever, uh, those are the yes, no questions you answer on the form. Those all include uh, disqualifying questions such as, are you a felon? Uh, are you a user of drugs? Uh, have you been dishonorably discharged from the armed forces? You know, all the typical dis disqualifiers uh, that we are required to terminate the transaction. Uh, if anybody answers yes to those questions other than the first one, which is, are you the actual buyer of the firearm? They have added two additional questions. So the first question is going to be, are you the actual buyer? Uh, they've included in that uh, 21B and 21C and they read as follows. So this will be a new yes, no question you have to answer. Do you intend to purchase or acquire any firearm listed on this form and any continuation sheets or ammunition for sale or other disposition to any person described in question 21C through M or to a person described in question 21N.1 who does not fall within a non-immigrant exemption? So what this is saying is remember the disqualifiers that disqualify you from being able to purchase that firearm. This question is directly asking, are you intending to purchase this firearm to either gift or sell or otherwise dispose of to another person who would answer yes to any of those questions, i.e. a prohibited person? What this is driving at is getting you to definitively answer yes or no. Are you in the active commission of a straw purchase? So they want that on record on the background check so they can obviously prosecute you if you later do transfer that firearm to a prohibited person and that was your intent. Sorry, I just had to switch out my SIM card. Again, through the Consolidated Appropriations Act and the Next Denial Act, what they are also intending to do is to be more stringent or to come down heavier on people who are committing straw purchases. So they want a definitive response on that form from the buyer where if they answer, no, I'm not intending to buy it for a prohibited person, but then you go ahead and immediately transfer it to a prohibited person, they would have cause or at least good evidence for prosecution in a courtroom. Again, that is just my understanding. Now, the question does begin with, do you intend? Now, that means intent has to be there that you are intending to, or the reason you are purchasing the firearm is for the express reason of transferring it to a prohibited person who could otherwise not purchase the firearm on their own. Uh, intent is something that would have to be proven if somebody were prosecuted. If you are in good faith purchasing the firearm on your own and you 
take it to the range a few times and you don't like it and you otherwise want to sell it or gift it to somebody, again, it's always good to make sure that that person is not prohibited. You can do that by taking the firearm and the buyer into a gun store and having a background check conducted, although in most states that is not a requirement. But with this new provision, it might be, it might be has somebody to make sure that that has been done if you choose to. Again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. It's just what I am seeing and, you know, it does open people up for scrutiny if that firearm arm does end up going from you to a prohibited person in the future. So just keep that in mind. The next question on the form, which is right below it, is now question C. Do you intend to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm listed on this form uh, and any continuation sheets or ammunition in furtherance of any felony or other offense punishable by imprison imprisonment for a term of more than one year, a federal crime of terrorism or drug trafficking offense? Now, Again, I'm not an attorney. I'm gonna keep saying that in this video. What I believe that that means is, are you intending to purchase the firearm to give it to somebody who will then use it in the commission of a crime, including uh, a, a crime of terrorism or drug trafficking? Um, that one I'm a little bit foggy on in the way it's worded, so if you are an attorney watching, feel free to chime in. I will pin your, com pin your comment to the top if you can sort of give a little bit of clarity on how that would read, but that is at least in my summary of just kind of looking at this, what I believe that that intends to say. So 21B, are you intending to purchase this for, for a prohibited person? And question C is, are you intending to purchase this for a prohibited person who will then use it in the commission of a crime? So um, those are now going to be yes, no questions you have to answer in the section 21 on the 4473 background check. To comply, this is moving on, to comply with the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, a 10-day waiting period on certain transfers involving the transferees under the age of 21, section C of the form has been revised as follows. So remember the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. I've done several videos on this. They have now changed uh, the way that NICS processes background checks for buyers 18, 19, and 20. Juvenile records have now been open for NICS examiners to look at in their determination of whether or not that person is eligible or not to receive a firearm. Because of those extra records, uh, are going to be open for investigation. They are giving NICS examiners additional time in the uh, in the event of a delay uh, up to 10 days from the traditional three days. Now, buyers 21 and older are still under the old three-day delay rule, but those buyers 18, 19, and 20 can be delayed for up to 10 days. And in all cases, when those buyers complete their 4473 background check, they will immediately go to a delay. So if you are 20 years old, you're going in to buy a Remington 870 shotgun, you will be immediately delayed. You can can be delayed for up to 10 days. Remember that does not include date of paper submission or holidays or weekends. So in, in effect, that can be in excess of two weeks. And currently what we are seeing is all buyers under the age of 21 have been experiencing the entire length of that delay cycle. Uh, that may change with uh, more funding or, or an enhancement in the operation at NICS to be able to get through those processes a little bit sooner or quicker. But that's at least what we're seeing now. Go see my most recent weekly used uh, gun review for more information, or I'm sorry, weekly used gun review, my most recent um, gun store vlog for more specific information on that. But these are the changes now to the 4473 in regards to the Safer Community Act. Uh, prior to the NICS POC information, an instructional header has been added stating, notice, if the transferee buyer is under 21, a waiting period of up to 10 days may apply where notification from NICS is received within three days uh, to further investigate a possible disqualifying juvenile record. A NICS check is only valid for 30 calendar days uh, uh, from the date recorded in question 27A. So also remember if you are delayed those two weeks after the proceed is given or the open status is provided, you only have an additional two weeks to come in and pick up that firearm before your transaction is expired and it has to be resubmitted. Um, so really all this is, it's a notice just notifying uh, vendors that if that buyer is under 21, expect a 10 day period. Uh, through the NICS e-check process, the NICS Brady date on those buyers under the age of 21 is still showing a three-day delay. So manually, they are calling uh, dealers to let them know of the extended Brady date to include those 10 days. So I guess this is just a notice uh, for dealers on the new record. Item 27C was amended to show the date uh, an FFL may transfer a firearm should NICS or state agencies conducting the background check not reply, stating more time is needed for the check. 
Uh, it now reads, next to the delay checkbox, the firearm may be transferred on such date if the time period is not extended by NICS for the, or the appropriate state agency and state law allows, optional. Um, so it will, uh, in this case, and I don't believe if this is, again, optional or a, a legal, uh, I guess, uh, window that's open here for an examiner to call in and extend that transfer date beyond the 10-day period should they deem they need additional time to be able to investigate that juvenile record. So again, that's just, just giving you guys the information here. Uh, a box has been added to 27D should NICS or the appropriate state agency delay the check as more time is needed to conduct uh, to conduct it on a transferee under the age of 21, it now reads, notice of additional delay of transferee under 21 years of age received on such date and may be transferred on such date. So this is on the back end of the form. This is where your dealer is going to be writing information. This is what this pertains to. If they call and say they need to extend that Brady date out past the 10-day period, we now will note what date we were contacted on when we were told that the date was extended and then what the new date is. So again, that's just a change for what the dealers are going to see on the portion of the 4473 that they complete. And then finally, also added to 27.D is a box for FFLs to check should no response be received from NICS or the appropriate state agency for transferees under the age of 21 years within 10 business days after the initial delay was given. It now reads, no response was provided within 10 business days after the initial delay or trans, uh, for transferee or buyer under 21. So there already exists a box like this today for the three-day waiting period. What they've added is another box for those buyers who are now under the requirement of the 10-day waiting period. Whereas if that time extends and the status is moved to open, we would then check that box. No resolution was provided within the allotted 10-day period. And typically on an open status is when the dealer could then legally transfer the firearm uh, per the Brady Law. Uh, a detailed list of all changes can be found on the ATF Revised 4473. The revised form will become mandatory for use April 1st. So April Fool's Day 2023, every single dealer in the country will be using this form. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, please contact your local ATF Industry Operations Office should you have any questions regarding this form. And this is again addressed to dealers. Um, again, uh, guys, this is just a brief summary of the new changes that have happened. This just dropped yesterday. So I wanted to just give you a quick summary on this. As I learn more information, I will give updates on this as well as when we start actually implementing the use of this in our store and see how it works and how this rolls in or ties into the NICS. Uh, online e-check process. Uh, I'll give you guys more information about how it's actually being implemented and if it's causing any changes to delay times or anything like that to keep you guys informed of what's going on. Uh, anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today on this. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Please also consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell notification button so you are aware when we are posting new content. I'm going to leave you guys off with that. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV and I will see you next time.